Welcome. This is David Bowles, Human Meme. Today's topic, Democracy Without Values. Great chess grandmaster Garry Kasparov recently said that a nation cannot be democratic without values. Because without values, there is no moral code to interpret, share, and teach. And so we are all awash in our own zealous foibles, and we cannot begin to master the relevancy of our past reined in against our natural, bitter nature. But isn't all of what Kasparov warns us against what we have now in America and in other parts of the world? We here in America claim democracy. But we appear to define it in name only, and only in the execution of the idea, and never in the wholesomeness and the theory of the whole process. Democracy demands the values of openness, of directness, and of unassailability. Democracies try to be fair and equal and accessible and maybe even friendly sometimes. Democracies try to help find a voice for every person. Democracies try to equalize the acidic conflict between social welfare and capitalism. And in that sticky fight for fairness, democracies tend to bulge and dangle and fall and fail. Democracies fail because one something times a thousand takes over a nation and becomes the norm. Lying, the want for money, the desecration of the holy against purity. And instead of being lifted up and instead of being inspired by the ideals of democratization, the nation instead just folds into itself and crumbles and dissolves. And once a democracy splinters, all the evil monsters who helped topple the valuing of values over destroying the antithope of those who seek to wound the innocent and help the wicked. They are enlivened to take over the world and reform it in their own authoritarian image. And when our values are challenged by a nation or a neighbor or just the ordinary tension of survival, we are forced into an evaluation of the danger against the norm. Are we infuriated by this challenge or just merely scared of the result? Is there a way out of the abyss through kindness and negotiation? Or do we have to go to war to protect what is important? to us. The trick to felling a democracy is in doing it quietly and subtly over time. Nobody notices the frog dying in lukewarm water. But when the temperature rises to boiling, it's over. Too late to do anything about saving the hierarchy of irrevocable science. So too does this boiling effect take out nature in the life of a nation. We let one indecency slide. We decide not to act in the face of a direct danger. We decide to be cool and to not confront the threat right in front of us. All in order to keep the peace and to get along. But... Oftentimes we must fight back immediately. We must deliver the death blow, the instant sting of retribution in response. 
and we must do that so those who endanger us will know to leave us alone, and that we, the democracy, are dangerous, and that we will, the democracy, fight back to the last life of every man, woman, and child. And we fight because what we value is important to us. And what we need to protect above all other dangers is the promotion of our own values in conflict. We shall stand. We shall fight back. We shall respond to any and all threats. And while all of that may sound good and right, it is difficult to navigate because one person's threat is another person's pure delight. And that's where the vitality of democracies are intended to shine. You believe this. I believe that. So, let's find a medium path we can share together that will lead us onward to victory and the protection of our shared values. And we shall do this together, united, and defined by our syncopated moral compass. But often that isn't how it works out. Self-interests and jealousies and tirades tend to dilute the togetherness aspect. And instead of working together, we work around each other, unwittingly dabbing our values in the back, while we openly betray each other from the shadows, pulling strings. So, my human meme friend, how do we get out of the decay of our moral democratic core? We must always renew the covenant. Well, we don't get there through patriotism, or the military, or the church. We get there through compromise and comity, getting along. We need to know we can rely on each other, flags or not, guns or not, God or not. We need to understand that any threat to you is a threat to me, and we don't always have to feed the tree of freedom with blood. Sometimes we can feed freedom without bullets and hatreds. Sometimes we can make freedom stronger by not allowing ourselves, as a nation, to get dragged into the mud of someone else's fight that holds no interest to us as a sovereign democratic nation. And yes, I'm sure all of that sounds dramatic and weak to some. But doing the right thing is never easy. And it is always hard and challenging to rise above mockery and contempt. But a democracy that values violence over propagation of blood is a nation that lives in and via fear. And never of humble respect for the social well-being of its citizens. If a democracy hopes to lead a world, it needs to provide a clear vision and a friendly pathway for others to join with us and not against us. We need to invite the disinvested into sharing our values, proving through deeds and faith that our values can become their values by persistence of moral vision, and by a greatness in result. But to make that demonstration real and viable, we must first set the example of excellence here at home. We need to show how we treat the most vulnerable around us and indicate to the rest of the world just how we may treat others who wish to become the us of us. And those eyes are always upon us, watching and never blinking. And every error of our ways is amplified on the world stage, because we have so much at stake and too little to offer. 
The world needs strong democracies, but any little fault is part of the process. Because when we do more good than bad, we set a bright line between ability and inaction. People and nations are always searching for brighter expectations, and a new democracy is just as fragile as an established one. And that is all by design of the nature of freedom because it should always be easier to fail together than to fall apart as one. Thank you for listening. Be a human meme.